And it's obviously not a running vehicle. Absolutely phenomenal. This is actually gangster. And a big part about car culture that I absolutely hate. Is I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, hold up. Hit me up. I want to buy your car. This is so in right now. Now to the bad. Oh, baby. Makes me want to know more, you know? What the heck? I would rock that. I'm saying don't do this. This isn't my taste. Plus one cool point. Stupid camber. 10 out of 10. I don't care what anyone says. Subarus all have the same four modifications. Makes me think you got to be pretty damn cool. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. You know that I dislike Honda. This guy has a sticker on the front that says F your opinions. What's up, everybody? We are here at Import Fest 2024, and we want to take a quick look around and just kind of let you guys in a little behind the scenes on what a tuner mag editor or our staff is looking for and what stands out to us at a show, maybe when we're looking for features or people to follow up with for interviews. So let's take a quick look. Now, obviously, it's going to be different for every editor and every staff member based on what they like. Like right away, I'm a big S13 guy. So obviously the bright yellow S13 is standing out, but obviously some things right away scare me off of this thing. The fact that things aren't hooked up and it's obviously not a running vehicle, uh, not gonna stand out too heavily to me right off the bat. One thing that will always stand out is when you see an old car that's obviously meticulously taken care of. That shows uh, a level of effort that you might not see on like a brand new car. You know, you get like a brand new off the lot car that's bagged and on wheels and wrapped. That's cool and all, but it doesn't have the same level of detail that something like this does. And obviously I am pro dark green car. I don't know if that's coming through in the camera, but this is dark green. This is actually gangster. Old rolls, big fan. And on the same note, something like this. So you have something that's a little more on the classic side, uh, obviously meticulously taken care of. And even things like custom plates that let you know what they're working with, like DTM power. This guy's obviously paying homage to DTM racing in some way, shape or form. That kind of makes me wonder what's under the hood. So I would want to talk to this owner soon. I don't know how I feel about that. It is a really cool idea, but the execution is a little on the sketchier side. I do like it though. No, this is like a small one, but when you see something with like a rare, reputable thing like Moon Eyes Sun Cover, I'm already interested in what's beneath this car. <laughs> or one of those. <laughs> uh, a bunch of extra turbos. Great way to get attention. Also, Trini license plate. Shout out the Trinis. Little caveat here, just because I'm walking past something and not stopping right away doesn't mean it doesn't stand out. But we're looking for the things that stand out the most or like will grab you off your seat or as you're, by, as you're walking by them, you know? I hope that makes sense to some of you guys. Okay, cool platforms like a JZX Chaser or a Mark II or this super sick wagon, always gonna catch my attention. Let's go back down this way first. Oh, hold up. Things that are going to catch your attention at a show. Definitely peekaboo hoods. This is so in right now. And the fact that they went through and polished and coated everything shiny as hell. I'm like a bird. I see something shiny. I'm already interested. Also, the workmanship is insane. Oh, dude. Okay. Cool little homage to the hot rodding era right here. The see-through coolant pipes. Big fan of that. That is very cool. Oh, baby. Okay. Lambo doors. Love them or hate them. They are always going to command attention, even on a Tesla. Here's one I was looking for a good example of, and this is a damn good example of it. Uh, a cohesive color scheme. You don't have to have like a full blown livery or like crazy graphics or things like that. But if you have a noticeable, nice color scheme, this is easy on the eyes. This is going to grab attention very quickly. Uh, I'm not a Volkswagen guy, but I love this. So that's a perfect example. Custom lighting, also a big one. You see someone's put some detail into their lights. See a little anime nod there and some custom lights going on. Uh, that's an instant attention grabber. Makes me want to know more, you know? Oh man, colored carbon fiber. Big, big attention grabber. Love this green. I'm actually a little jealous about the green carbon fiber. I would rock that for sure slammed old trucks. I don't know that's very specific, but that is going to get my attention every time. Is it really import fest material? I don't know, but I love it. So hell yeah, more the merrier. Don't do this. 
don't do this. Stop it. Stop it. Probably an extreme example of the cohesive color scheme, but also just like, it's not a, a livery livery per se, but it's almost a livery and uh, it looks killer. You guys know the car already. It's been in past mag before, Ray's RX-7. Uh, also lots of friggin' fancy arrow, carbon fiber fancy arrow, front to back, and, and done in a way that's kind of cohesive and has a design language to it. Definitely a tension grabber. Always gonna pull me out of my tracks when I'm watching something like this. Dark green paint, plus one cool point. Everything about this is good. I don't really know what to point to as something that makes it stand out. Uh, the kit, obviously, a very expensive kit. Very well put together. Nice white. Show lights, plus one cool point. Definitely a good way to get attention. Without going overboard. Although this is a bad example of a car to say without going overboard. Color matched or almost color matched sporting equipment attached to your car or truck in any way, shape or form, plus one. Bikes, snowboards, stuff like that attached to your car. Also, K-trucks are just really cool. So, hell yeah, K-truck. It's like a Subaru. It is a Subaru. Yo, yeah, this rocks. 10 out of 10. K-trucks are always cool. Write that down, kids. You don't need lots of power to be the fastest guy on the block to be the coolest, because look at this thing. I think ultimately you're like, it's about walking the fine line between like weird and unique but also tasteful, if that makes sense. It's, you really gotta find a balance. I think maintaining like a good vehicle image is a balance between like the weird and wild and then the subtle and timeless. And, or you go in one direction, you go super weird and super wild, like you saw with the livery and the dancing lights, or you go super subtle. And so it begins, your journey. Tune away, little bird, tune away. So some stuffed animals, some stuffed Pokemon, sticking out the sunroof. Great way to draw some attention, especially when the same Pokemon are on the back window. Or some of them, anyways. Got a lot of love for Gengar. Oh, Underglow? Hell yeah, brother. Underglow, always cool. I don't care what anyone says. Reminds me, I gotta fix mine. Shout out to Oracle. There is a great example of something that is unique that you probably haven't seen a lot of, and that is painting over the carbon fiber, but like leaving, you know, exposed carbon fiber is cool. But so is painted carbon fiber, so why not do both? They've implemented some like super dope designs over their fender arches and, and in the hood even. Uh, there's even more like cool graphic stuff going on in the hood. I actually really appreciate the uh, the craftsmanship going on there. Oh my God, wait a second. Bro, the whole thing's carbon fiber. Get a close up of that. Front bumper, hood, fenders. Uh, yes, even the eyelids. Uh, I really like the the mix between exposed carbon and paint. 10 out of 10. Good stuff. Might be able to talk to someone about putting that turbo three-cylinder in an 8.6. One day. You know what else will always stand out? Big dumb body kits owned by other PassMag staff members. Okay, old school, classic motorsport liveries. I don't even care if your car is like motorsport spec. This is obviously bagged, but uh, yeah, hell yeah. Old school motorsport liveries, always gonna stick out. Speaking of which, yeah, it bears repeating, old school badass motorsport liveries. Uh, also sporting the past 365 rally sticker, which makes me think you gotta be pretty damn cool. So, take notes. Now, last but certainly not least for me, uh, there's going to be no substitute for insane fabrication and craftsmanship and DIY ingenuity. And that's exactly what we see in Rusted and Busted's awesome, awesome classic Corvette. Uh, this thing has won awards at lots of shows. It was a hand-picked favorite at the LZ World Tour last year. And for good reason, look at the fabrication and just like insane custom work. There is no C4 vet like this anywhere in the world and that is why you have a really cool one-of-a-kind thing. And also, dark green, plus one cool point, obviously. Nothing's gonna be better than cool hand-built shit. Anyways, that's enough for me. I'm gonna hand this over to Yusuf and see what stands out to him at a car show, and then you'll have an idea of what Fast Mag staff and Tuner Magazine staff are looking for when we're at shows like this. See you guys. Uh, 
got some jazz going. Turn that off. Okay, what's up? Thank you, Adam, for that intro. And let's look at some stuff that I would look at looking at shows from a magazine perspective. Okay, um, so I actually know the owner of this car personally. The engine bay in this car is absolutely phenomenal. All of the proper titanium welding, pie cuts, all of that is really beautiful. So we do look for attention to detail with a lot of stuff, as you can see with all of the fabrication that's going along on this build. We watch to make sure you have a front bumper. All body panels are present. I think that's kind of a no brainer, but real versus fake wheels. If you have Volk raised T37s or Vork Lays T38s, people do pay attention to that. But there's a lot of nice wheels like these 57 CRs on this S2000. Look just how simple and clean the fitment is on the static build. Do looking for stuff like that. Here's a big one from my perspective. The kind of tire that's on your car. This is a very unpopular opinion. I'm going to roast myself a little bit here. I have Joy Road something something somethings on my car. Um, from a magazine perspective, that is mildly frowned upon to have mismatched tires, Joy Roads on the front, Centaurs on the back. Um, that's just one of those attention to detail things. It's my daily driver. I don't really care. But if I was to have it featured in the magazine, that is something that I would have. So there's a lot of very tasteful cars that are very beautifully modified. 90% of the cars in this show. Enough said. <laughs> factory spec of the original car that you started with. So a lot of people will have, let's say they get a red M4 and then they wrapped it in this army green. You'd say, oh wow, that's pretty cool. But just the fact that the car came from this color in the factory makes the whole build just that little, little detail better because regardless of who wrapped your car, how you wrap a car, whatever, whatever, you can always tell that wasn't the factory color if you look hard enough. And from a magazine that focuses on the upper echelon of builds, we do kind of look for that when picking cars for features and stuff like that. A big part about cars for me and a big part about car culture that I absolutely hate is people building their show cars and only taking it to shows on Saturday. I get it. You'd want to take your 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 200 thousand dollar investment on the road every day, take it to work, whatever, whatever. But for example, Dave, beautiful, beautiful NSX. He drove it from Montreal to Toronto. It doesn't mean he has to take it to work every day, but it means he's not trailering it down the street. And that we love, that people that actually drive and enjoy their cars for what they're meant to do. I can't roast it, I love it. This thing's gorgeous. Uh, if the owner's watching this, at Mazda RX-7 on Instagram, hit me up, I wanna buy your car. That's different. Okay, another big one, when I was talking about wraps, paint versus wrap. So people say, oh, paint is dead, oh, this, oh, that. All my cars are wrapped. There's no substitute to painting your car, unfortunately. It's a lot more expensive, a lot more time consuming, a lot more risk involved. And when you get your car back and it doesn't look as good as you thought, you're like, oh wow, I spent 10, 15, 20 grand on question mark. But something like this, if this car is wrapped pearl white, I'd say, oh wow, that's really cool. But it's just that level, to de level of detail that paint brings to the kit and that amount of depth. Now to the bad, now to the bad, the bad. Walking towards this vehicle here. A rep wheels, come on. You go this far into a build, that's what the heck? Do you see how much wiring loom is in here? What? Look at the wiring loom. <laughs> okay, this guy just loomed his whole engine bay. Okay, I get it. Not really. But if you're going to go this far into a build and this deep, get quality parts, get real wheels. God forbid if you get an accident, do you want to be hugged by proper bridge or core bows, something that's actually safe FIA rated? Or do you want the spec R's to be saving your life so you don't get spinal compression? I'll let you take that pick, but I know what my pick is. It's not the spec R's because I value my life. This cool roof box. It's kind of cool, the roof box extending on the wing. It's just sick. And the rally lights. I really like that. Um, all Subarus are the same though. All the owners have the same four modifications. You all need to be more original. Okay, here's another often overlooked one. Vanity plates on cars. And even things like custom plates that let you know what they're working with, like DTM power. It's one of those mods that if your license plate just says CBWF283, the regular Ontario one, okay, sure. But when you have like an actual just tasteful and funny license plate, like if you're going this deep into a build, the $300 investment that can keep carrying on to other builds as well, I'm saying, I just think it's worth it. So this is not an M3. It's, I didn't check it, but 325, 330 CI, something like that, E46. This guy managed to make his car absolutely beautiful. And that is something that we would consider putting into 
Instagram post, print article, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, because it's not about the platform of the car that was done, it's about the tastefulness of the build that was done. Because we wouldn't feature an M3, for example, that had rep wheels, bad fitment, bad tires, bodywork is bad, ugly kit, just in general, untasteful. But this is a very tasteful car, but it's not an M3. So that doesn't really matter. It's kind of how you build it and the tastefulness that goes behind your build. And this one, I love, to be honest. This is really, really pretty. His interior is insane. He did like the OEM style nav mod in it, which I absolutely love. And just a stock interior that's really clean. I love that. This guy's actually local to me. Shout out Newmarket. Um, he runs the MS Road to Kirshaw Shaw Bloomington Go. Good charity, good cause that goes behind. Um, but the amount of craftsmanship and work that is involved in something like this, even just looking at his trunk setup with all the HKS mat, all of that is just, you can't really beat that. He even, for example, if you look inside, the theme follows along on the interior, the full HKS, carbon dash. Like, there's just different levels of tastefulness. And I, this isn't my taste. I'll say that to Eli's face. I'll say it all the time. I love the guy, but this isn't my taste. I just appreciate a build like this. It's real, the interior, even the engine bay, oh my, like the amount of workmanship and attention to detail. If you look at every single bolt, even on the coil packs, they're done. They're done right. Eli, what's up? What's going on? It's not gonna be everybody's taste. I wanted to keep it a 90s theme and make it like, kind of keep it true to the 90s vibe. If you've been watching Pat's Mike for any time whatsoever, you know that I dislike Hondas. I dislike Acuras. I dislike front wheel drive in general because they're boring. You can't kick the clutch around a corner and that's it. There's no, nothing else. Front wheel drive just sucks. I like the, I like the exhaust tips though. I like it. Um, if you look at over there, A6 Sensei, Mr. Justin, Mr. Airs.shop, Mr. Dead and Gone. Oh, I like these canards on this diffuser on the extension. Second gen BRZ. Leave them stock, they're sick. Modify them, they're sick. Only car, in my opinion, that doesn't look good wide body. They're just sick. They're just really cool cars. Oh, the Arizona tank, that's kind of funny. Oh, and the 99 cent plate, hey, that's sick. Um, yeah, that's just funny. See what I mean? Uh, Genuine, okay, what's your first reaction about this car? It's clean, it's clean, it's sick. Very clean. What do you like about the Arizona theme? Consistent coloring. That's something I've noticed you can get easily wrong with the coloring. That's fair. Uh, custom plate, no custom plate. What's your opinion? I mess with it. I hey. mess with it, I mess with it. This is what I'm talking about. I love blast pipes. I just think they're badass. I just think they're gangster. Justin got his brand engraved on his exhaust tip. Does his car sound good? Absolutely not. Um, it just doesn't. Sorry, Justin. But it looks sick. Okay, now, this build, A6 Sensei. This is, if you're into cars and you've been on the internet for the past five or so years, you know this car. It's pretty infamous for its stupid camber. The amount of work that goes into getting double digits of camber on a vehicle, A is ridiculous. Is it my style? Kind of. Again, no. I like cars that are more drivable, but the Blitzo ones on it, come on. There's just no getting around that. They're sick. The amount of work that goes into this, even the front, like it's not credit card gap. It's not dollar bill gap. There is no gap. You cannot get, and it's not bagged, static. This is how it rolls. And this car is just honestly, oh, and it has a full custom paint job. It's not just a stock FRS red. You can see with the sparkle and the metallic in it, but Love it or hate it, you honestly can't knock the workmanship in this car. Personally, I love it. I think it's sick. To anybody that doesn't like your car, his car, lower your tone a little bit. <laughs> Subarus all have the same four modifications. Let's just gloss past that. Um, they all have the same exhaust, same tune. They spent 20 grand on an IAG short block to make 160 wheel horsepower and then it blows up the next year anyways. Um, wow. This should be on our Throwback Thursdays features and Instagram posts. XXRs, never mind, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> no, this thing is honestly one of the few examples of proper early 2000s builds that are here. And honestly, I like it. So this guy has a sticker on the front that says F your opinion, so I'm gonna give my opinion on it now. See what I mean on getting a factory colored car that's very cool? Because this is clearly not a cheap wrap job and you can still tell the car is red. It's still a red car to everybody with your trunk open. Mid trunk setup, I'm not sure why you're showing it off. Okay, real APR mirrors. Oh my, what the heck is going on with that? It's not the handbrake. 
I like the wheels. The wheels are cool. Prime example of if you're gonna wrap your cart, buy a neutral color cart or get a cool color of the cart. If you're gonna buy a car red, sure, there's no issue with that. But the second you change the color due to this, everybody knows it's a red cart. You can't get around it. And it's not just, oh, I'm gonna leave my engine base shut. If you come here, red. If you come there, red. You can tell the car's red. Please guys, just buy neutral color cars if you're gonna wrap them. In my opinion, one of the best kits you can get on 350Zs, GTRs, the Ben Stopper kits just flow so nicely and this is it. This is it, I like this. Not his front fitment. I lied, I don't like his front fitment. I could live in that arch. Like, we're in Toronto and you could honestly put that on Airbnb and probably get like two, 300 bucks a night. I love this car. I also wanna buy it. It's sick. It's a Liberty Walk E90 M3 or E92, E92 M3. I don't know if I could do four. Bro, this guy's like 36, what the heck? This is crazy. Civics. Price low to high, like stage one of the build, stage two and stage three, kind of like, other than RWB Porsches, because I love RWBs, this is my favorite kit, I think. I love the winglet, I don't know what they're called. I love the little winglet on top of the over fender. Oh, this thing is just sick. There's not much I can say about it. It's really nice. I really like it. I feel bad for the cars parked next to him. Oh my God. Yeah, that thing is gorgeous. Um, and I think that's all she wrote. Thank you for coming, guys. Uh, we'll see you at the rollout. That's going to be a pretty interesting time.